Good evening, everyone. I am Reverend Dr. Evangeline Anderson Rajkumar, served as a professor in a seminary or four, five seminaries for 20 odd years, and now a pastor of two Lutheran congregations in Corridon, Indiana. More important than that is I am a Dalit. It would have been considered impossible for a Dalit to come up and speak simply because a Dalit, a Dalit body is the site of pollution. That which decides the purity of the dominant other. I do not want to say the pure, you know, this, uh, in this caste hierarchy, to consider oneself as higher caste, upper caste, is such a myth. There is nothing upper about the upper caste and lower about. And therefore, to say that whereas the potential of a person deemed with dignity and worth is a God-given reality, we have a situation in India where the Brahminic Hindutva forces can actually challenge that and deny whole people of their ability to reflect the image of God and their possibility of even being considered as a worthy human being of being human. And this is the crux of the whole problem of caste consciousness, where the Dalits, tribals, and Christians, women, you find there is that coming, coming together of that intersectionality of race, caste, class, gender, and patriarchy, all held together. And therefore, to make the, their bodies as the site of violence is actually a way of reminding those people that collective, uh, that collective humanity of their fundamental right to be human. It is a way of reminding them that if they ever cross or transgress those lines, boundaries that are drawn for them, they can expect violence. So violence is a way of keeping, quote unquote, that polluting other within the boundaries, control their bodies and their movement, control the space that they occupy. And that is why for us to analyze the situation, we can, it seems as if the Constitution is irrelevant. It seems as if the Constitution is redundant simply because we have been just enumerating all these incidents of violence and we see on the other hand absolute impunity on the part of those who perpetuate violence. Not only impunity, but also support, tacit support of them to make sure that they do not get the punishment that they richly deserve. Instead, they are rewarded. So, if this has been the history of the marginalized, the Dalit tribals, Christians being sidelined as a nobody, then there is very little that of change that we see. We, if you try to map the different uh, incidents of violence that happened in Indian context, 1992, yes, targeting the Muslim bodies, 2002, Godra, once again, the Muslim become the targets, the sites of all violence. 2008 is Kandamal. The tears 
in, of people in Kandamal have not yet dried. And that is why, for us, I'm wondering whether we need to change the whole pattern of our thinking. How do we hold the power, those who abuse the power, how can we hold them accountable? I believe that it is only when they are economically pinched. Sorry, I'm using, just imagining new words. Only when they feel that those sanctions in a public space, in a global platform, the aspect of shame works. They do not want to be shamed in a global public arena. And I believe that is a way we can focus our attention. You know, just the fact that India is now 11th, it ranks 11th as a country that uh, has no respect for religions and where, uh, you know, free, uh, religious freedom. I think to consolidate our voices and continue to prop them up as those who should be shamed. The in, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's saying that we distinguish between Indian and India. And as my, the previous speaker said, we do not put the whole Hindu faith into one uh, box. No, not at all. But delineate that Hindutva force that stands as the, as the culprit to, to rob millions of lives, especially the Dalit tribal Christians, of their right to human dignity. I pause here. Thank you very much.